I'm Mike, and today we're going to look at Time Magazine's very recent Sorry Vegans, Here's How Meat Eating Made Us Humans, which is a very direct jab at vegans, especially considering they say that veganism is a counterfactual crusade. You want counterfactual? How about when Time Magazine told everybody to eat butter going directly against 400 controlled feeding trials that cemented the intimate link between saturated fat, like is in butter, and cholesterol, instead presenting dairy industry funded pseudoscience. Let's just get to the point. Did meat make us human? Was it the main factor in brain growth? Soon you will see the ancient tooth plaques, the fossilized feces, and the brain fuel math that shows that novel sources of plants, particularly cooked starches, were the main factor in brain evolution. Meat, not so much. I'm not saying that we didn't eat meat in human history, just that its role in evolution has been massively exaggerated. The worst and most misleading part of this article is where they say a better caloric alternative to fruits and veggies were so-called underground storage organs, root foods like beets and yams and potatoes. But then they say that starches were worthless because they were hard to chew. Raw. And this is where meat stepped in to save the day, particularly raw ground meat. Ew. It is now clear that this article is a half-baked retort to the Huffington Post's Sorry Paleos Early Humans Ate Carbs and Were Better Off For It, which highlights the actually compelling research of Karen Hardy and her team showing that big brains require carbs as fuel and starchy tubers were a very reliable source. So Time's raw starches are too chewy ploy pretends to debunk the starch brain theory, but nobody is saying that we relied on raw starches. This is where the biggest assumption of the article is exposed, that this brain growth required to make us human happened before cooking, but scientists point to cooked starches as brain fuel. But time sidesteps this entirely because the study that they cite relies entirely on the idea that we started cooking significantly 500,000 years ago, but our brain started growing rapidly 2 million years ago. This ignores the strong evidence of cooking found 1.6 to 1.8 million years ago, so it might just be that we have been cooking for far longer than those scientists would like us to believe, and that cooked food, particularly cooked starches, were actually what fueled brain evolution. Let's investigate that. How does starch compare to meat in terms of brain fuel? Well, our brain burns 20 to 25 percent of our total calories and 60 percent of our glucose. And starch is literally chains of glucose. So starchy tubers and pre-industrial grains would have supplied a reliable year-round source of glucose. Fuel in meat, on the other hand, is all fat and protein. And fatty acids like those found in meat, when converted to glucose, can lose up to 53% of their energy. And protein is an even worse source of energy that we really only use when we're starving. But elk meat and other wild game that our ancestors would have seen were 80% protein and 20% fat. And that's why Peter Unger, chair of anthropology at the University of Arkansas said, quote, even the staunchest meat advocates recognize that protein and fat cannot power the brain. But the main reason that time is plainly wrong is that in order to grow the largest brain per body size, you need a novel source of calories that other animals don't have access to. That is not meat. So this meathead theory assumes that a pre-human with the brain roughly equivalent to the size of a chimpanzee and no increased hunting ability was all the sudden a better hunter than actual carnivores like lions who don't even need to chew their food because their stomach acid is so naturally strong. Since meat takes slightly less time to chew when we grind it, we can finally become king of the world. That's just not very realistic, but cooked starches, on the other hand, were a very novel source of calories. And as evolutionary geneticist Mark G. Thomas says, a cooked potato, for example, is 20 times more digestible than a raw one. Now to the physical evidence. Yes, we do see animal bones at archaeological sites, and for a long time, that's pretty much all archaeologists could see, and so it seems as if we ate a virtually all-meat diet and that made its way into pop culture. Problem with this is if your tribe was, say, vegan for 364 days out of the year, and on the last day they ate a boar, over the course of about 30 years there would be six thousand bones there. In a hundred years, twenty thousand bones, but plants like starchy tubers just don't leave that kind of evidence. 
but with newer technology, we can get a more balanced idea of what people ate. For example, we can now analyze fossilized feces, and these fossilized feces in particular showed that we were eating a diet of about 100 grams of fiber per day. The average American only eats 15 grams of fiber a day with their high meat diet. Me, personally, on a whole food plant-based diet, I eat 80 to 110 grams of fiber a day. It would be very difficult to eat that much fiber on a high meat diet, as meat does not contain fiber. And then there's also the fossilized tooth plaques. Even Neanderthals were found to be eating cooked pre-wheat 30,000 years ago. And at the dawn of Homo sapiens, aka us, 105,000 years ago, starch. Now for this study that looked deep into pre-human history and studied fossilized teeth plaques from 400,000 years ago. They found pine pollen, a lot of starch, charcoal, fungi, minerals, and fat. Most important thing here is that the starch was in combination with charcoal, which means they were pretty much guaranteed cooking it, and the fat was not animal fat, it was fat from nuts like walnuts or pine nuts. Other than the moth wing they found on one of the teeth, these pre-human people appeared to be vegan. And though it wasn't even the main topic of the study, they said, quote, starchy plants provide the energy needed to support an enlarged brain. Now given that scorched animal bones are often the thing that proves that humans were cooking, could it be that such a plant-based diet like this was precisely why we don't have more evidence of cooking beyond 500,000 years back? I challenge you to find a two million year old yam. Next, the article also pushed against the idea that humans aren't adapted to eat meat. I have an entire video on this, which you can watch here, but I will just say this, that the longest living population on planet Earth consumes no meat. That's the Adventist vegetarians who have a lifespan of over 84 years old. So I don't think that we've adapted to meat, especially given that our number one killer is heart disease and meat clogs our arteries. In the end, if, if meat played a role in early brain evolution, it was likely no larger than, say, nuts, which are also mostly protein and fat. In this sense, you could say that anything that helped humans evolve to any extent made us human. Sorry time, nuts made us human. Sorry time, bark made us human. Sorry time, cavewoman prostitution made us human. But when it comes down to what food played the largest role in making us human, it was certainly cooked starches. Lastly, the one thing I do like about this article is that it mentions that you do not require meat in the modern world. We simply don't need it anymore, whether or not you believe that it helped us evolve or not, or made us human. So, you can either choose to eat a innocent animal for no reason other than taste, or not, which is what really makes you a good human being and not just a human being. All right, that's all for today. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.